Hello everyone, welcome to another video on cybersecurity topic where we're going to talk about the non-human identity or NHI and NHI security. Now this may be a foreign term for you but it's becoming more and more important and there will be news articles, breaches and cyber world, cyber news that will talk about NHI. So in this video I will try to explain what that NHI is and how you can protect your NHI accounts and implement security to meet compliance to stay ahead of the game if you like this video make sure to subscribe comment and share this video with others all right with that let's get started so the topics that I'm going to cover in this quick presentation is going to cover what is a NHI what are some examples of NHI so you are completely clear what they really are then I want to talk about the security controls right those are important if you know what they are then you can implement these controls to protect these NHIs or non-human identities and I'm also going to refer to some of the top vendors now you, you should do your own research and uh, this is not a paid uh, presentation so any vendor that I mentioned I'm not taking any money from any of them those are just examples directly from Gartner you should do your own research and identify the right vendor for yourself all right so let's get started so if you look at uh, a definition how you explain the NHI or non-human identity this refers to digital identities or entities that are not tied to human users and that is very important okay because what you see in traditional cyber security okay you will see that we have a lot of controls for human users meaning we want a username for you we want to give you a mfa we want to join you to a domain we want to look at uh, we want to enforce a long password for you all of that stuff but when the identities are not tied to an end user but rather to machines applications services or other automation then those that's the area where we still use accounts some type of accounts but they're just not tied to particular users right so that, that that account may be used by a process even right if you think about linux there are lots of daemons that we talk about they're all running different kind of processes now interestingly if you think about traditional security there are lots of tools that will give you the visibility and compliance and controls for identities that are tied to human identity and access control solutions so you can do a google on that and you'll find a lot of solutions for that but this field for the non-human identity is still maturing in my opinion okay so let's see some examples so it's uh, it is going to be completely clear to you what we're talking about so let's start with some examples the first example that i want to present is the device identities now what are those those could be your cell phone your own laptop okay sometimes they're not uh, a company device that they are providing it's your own device bring your own device model so a lot of time what you would do you would uh, you you the company would still like to use a mobile device management solution and they will install some endpoint detection and response solution on your device so that they can manage it so this refers to unique identification and management of individual devices within a network so it could be a computer again mobile phone iot's or servers so typically your device identities that we when we use it we're going to use it for tracking and managing the security and access physical or virtual devices in a network so you can think of other controls like network access control device management policies and endpoint security okay so that's the device identity the next step of identity 
that is also not tied to any human uses we call that an application identity those can be managed through identity and access management platform api gateways and other type of application security platforms now uh, application identity you if you are coming from a, a developer background you probably you can relate that we are talking about identity identification of a software application that you are running within the environment so i already told you about the daemons that we run in linux so look it up learn what they are so these uh, application identities they also need to be securely authenticated and authorized right you don't want to give these applications admin level privileges you only want to give them even these identities the amount of permission they really need so we need to make sure these applications can securely interact with other systems right so this is something we call orchestration a lot of times and uh, when you build an application if you have to enhance the capability or if you if you want other vendors other customers to use your product you use apis so these application identities can ensure this this interaction with these apis and everything so these application identities they are typically used in securing application to application communication so let's see the third type of example this is probably the most common example of non human identity which which i call the service account okay now these are very special accounts created for running applications you can look for demons application services or processes and a lot of time what you will see these service account they will have elevated access level okay and a lot of times these accounts are designed to run automated tasks scripts or even services since they have elevated processes it's very important for you to make sure that you know who are using it if your system is breached you want to ensure that these accounts can be tracked can be monitored and if you see something weird going on we should be able to set up alerts okay these accounts you should also implement that some control you want to ensure that even the service account they have the strong password you rotate these credentials even for the service account just like a regular user you would use the principle of least privilege and monitor for unusual activities and a lot of times you can also integrate a tool like a privilege access management solution for these accounts like pam solution cyber arc a tool that we're going to talk about in a few slides from here all right so we covered three accounts so far three types of uh nhi or non-human identities so far device identities application identities and then service account so let's look at few more so we have api keys and tokens there also you can think of them as identities as well so you they need you need especially if you think about the cloud a lot of integration that i see they use the api keys right it's very common to use api keys and it will easily integrate with systems but a lot of time when you just use this api key again they are not tied back to the end user right so we can lose the non-repudiation part to some extent we don't know who might be using this xsd unless we exactly know and we have a very strict written policy with the end user hey you do not share this api key with anybody else the another type of non-human identities would be certificates and cryptographic key this is probably more common but you typically don't do much as an end user you just get it or your browser a lot of times they already have everything that you need to make things work robotic process automation bots so those are another type of identities of these guys robotic process automation automation is everything so today's world if you are not thinking about automation and and improving the efficiency of your existing processes you are not doing everything right there is something that you're doing wrong okay so automation you you must see in your career okay so this robotic process automation they use these non-human identities 
to perform automated tasks. These identities need to be managed as well. Just to make sure that automated processes do not become victors for cyber attacks. Like for example, if these bots are breached and if, if some somebody, a bad guy got access to one of these bots, they can write some bad script like to go to some malware site and, and download some malware and automate the download of that and automate the attack to other systems. Who knows what they will be able to do. So we gotta be very careful with these identities as well. But the last one that I'm gonna mention is the container and images. And in this world today, where everybody is talking about microservices, right, and containers and images and talkers. The security of these containers and images, they are also becoming very, very important. Now, this itself is a very complex sub subject uh, from a security standpoint. So I would try to do another presentation where I'm just going to talk about container and images and how you can secure it. But I think I have given you enough examples of non-human identities by now. Okay, so again, so the problem that we have today, we have a lot of identity and access management solutions. They will give you a very good governance, access review, and uh, provisioning, deprovisioning of user accounts. But a very good tool, which is highly adapted in the industry for this non-human identities, is hard to find. Okay, so. What can you do? So what are the challenges? So if you have an HIS, and I promise that you probably do, even if you say you don't, you probably go and take a look, you are probably using an HIS. Second, one of the challenges that we have the provisioning and deprovisioning, how do you know people are creating an HIS? How they're managed? Who is assigning permissions? How they're deprovisions, okay? So they don't follow the typical user management process when you when the identity start to a regular user. Like you join a company, you leave a company, right? There are some processes that you go through. With this, no, we don't have that. Again, who is managing the access level? Who is configuring the monitoring and auditing? And where does it even fit in identity governance? Okay. In identity governance, in zero trust, it's very important that we know about every single identity. Whenever they're accessing, you ask, hey, who are you? Do you have the right authorization? How could we do that? So let's look at some of the major vendors again. I'm not paid by any of these vendors. I'm just referencing as per the Gartner recommendation. So the first one I want to recommend, or not recommend, I'm going to mention is uh, CyberArk. CyberArk, I have used this tool in my professional work as a PAM solution uh, in multiple different companies that I've worked in the past. And they're very good for their privilege access management solution. And recently, CyberArk, they announced $1.54 billion acquisition of non-human entity management vendor, Venafi. So they also realized that this is an area where we as an industry, we just have to be more secure. We just have to spend more time and money and we just have to match you that space. Okay. The second one I want to mention is the asterisk security. Uh, this one focuses on securing API keys, OAuth apps and service account. It provides an agentless solution, which I kind of like a lot of the time. So agentless is better for me. And that in inventories and manages NHS across various environments. Okay. Asterisk security also provides threat detection through behavioral analysis. And you can also automate some detection of risk as well. Okay. So check it out that too. Right, so the last one that I'm going to mention uh, in this space is the intro security. This one also made it to the news recently. And uh, this month, earlier this month, June of 2024, uh, they raised funding uh, of about $18 million. Okay, so just do a Google and you'll find the news and what's going on. Uh, they are similar to Asterisk Security in my mind. 
and they also offer a robust solution for managing and securing secrets and non-human identities and it will give you visibility into the NHIs, track their usage and ensure that they are properly managed throughout their life cycle which is very very important. So the platform if you look at it will allow you to discover and then create an inventory then even classify do posture management and will allow continuous monitoring of your environment. All right, so I just wanted to conclude with this slide and uh, talk about some key points. So non-human identities in HI, they are going to be more and more, uh, you know, we'll talk more and more about this space because we have not talked about this space very well. And there is still a huge risk in my mind because we just don't have enough governance for NHI identities, okay? These are essential for zero trust, okay? So NHI security is vital for implementing zero trust. Then only you can ensure that every identity is verified before accessing any resources within the organization. I understanding and identifying these NHIs are also important to mitigate security risk, right? From a compliance standpoint, maybe you have GDPR, HIPAA, and other type of auditing that you have to do. This, you, you gotta take care of these identities, you gotta have access review, you gotta have uh, logs, monitoring, everything that you need for the regular accounts to meet the regulatory compliance. And also, you, these identities, they just enhance your operational efficiency. So, automates identity management task, reducing manual workload and improving security through consistent policy enforcement. So, think about your, your identities that you're, you're using in your organization that are not tied to the user and think maybe when was the last time you have changed or rotated their password? When was the last time you looked at their access log? Even ask the question, okay, I'm using this five service account. Am I sending the logs of the user activity of the service account activity to a, to a central same solution? Am I doing that? Am I doing enough? How do I know this one of this account has already been breached and those accounts has been used to create other batch processes, install malware, create other user accounts that I don't know about? Think and think how you can improve the security of your organization. Thank you very much. If you have any comments, uh, if I, anything I missed, please let me know. I'll be glad to look at your reviews and comments and uh, share our experience. Thank you very much.